Welcome back to the Meddling Kids Podcast, your groovy review of Scooby-Doo. I'm your host, Julie Kin, and thanks for your patience over the past couple of weeks. While I did not put out an episode, I had to have some surgery, but I'm all better now, so thanks for all the good wishes. Today we're talking about A Good Medium is Rare, one of the new Scooby-Doo movies starring Phyllis Diller. Now this one starts with the kids coming out of a double feature. They saw Island of Ghosts and The Creeping Phantom. This was an unfortunate choice as now Scooby and Shaggy are even more scared than usual. They see a cute white poodle stuck in a box in the alley. The kids think she's adorable and pick her up. They notice that her collar has gigantic gemstones on it and an address. Scooby isn't sexually interested in this poodle despite his previous proclivities. Turns out it's a boy dog, but I get the sense that Scooby would be open-minded about at least a little spooning. The kids go to the address, and it's a huge stone mansion. The gate has a stone gargoyle that asks, Who's there? With eyes aglow, Fred tells the gargoyle that, We found your dog, and they're let in. A butler lets them in, and the mansion seems more like a Baroque museum than a home. In walks the lady of the house, Phyllis Diller. She warmly invites the kids to her shacky poo, and they are thrilled to meet the famous star. I wonder if these guest spots were like the present day equivalent of being a voice actor for a few scenes in the Lego movie or Trolls. Like, was this a big thrill for the stars, or was this a humiliation? I'm voting for the former, because they all seem to really be hamming it up and have a good time. Phyllis Diller promises them a reward for returning the pup. She asks the butler, Lucas, to give the dog his dinner, but no banana cream pie because he had run away. Scooby and Shaggy are excited to be in a house where there is a promise of pie. I'm guessing someone gets a pie in the face by the end of the episode. As they walk around getting a tour, Phyllis Diller tells them calmly that that hallway in the castle is haunted by the Banshee of Glockmora. They hear a howling wail, and Phyllis Diller is thrilled. Velma says it was just the wind. The kids get freaked out in a subsequent hallway due to suits of armor and animal heads and paintings watching them and changing shape. You know, traditional Scooby-esque kind of stuff. The kids are separated from Phyllis Diller by walking slowly. Sounds like some other children I know. And then they narrowly avoid falling in a trap door. We see mean eyes in the trap door waiting for prey. But the kids happen to walk to the left and miss the opportunity for more mayhem. Note that Phyllis Diller isn't in this scene. So perhaps this is another murder castle situation, like in the Don Knotts episode. Is she the bad guy? They accidentally avoid the trap three or four more times. The kids decide to leave after finding Phyllis Diller. She shows them a gallery of paintings of her deceased and rich husbands. Yep, definitely murder castle, and she's avoiding letting them go. Suddenly, the lights go out, and Phyllis Diller calmly lights a candle and then just blames the ghost of one of her husbands. Lucas comes in and asks Phyllis Diller to come to the library. They all go, and it looks ransacked. Under a pile of books, Fred finds the poodle. Phyllis Diller thinks the thief was looking for her priceless jewel collection, but she says he didn't get it because she has a great hiding spot. Velma finds a rucksack with the letters M.M. on it. She says the would-be thief must have dropped it because it certainly wouldn't be Phyllis Diller's with the initials M.M. on it. Really? Suddenly, an arm reaches through an open window, grabs the bag out of Velma's hands, and shuts the window again on the way out. Velma, Daphne, and Fred decide to go chase him. They jump out the window and the game is on. They walk through a graveyard but find no footprints. They're surrounded by statues and a super creepy one of a man-sized purple gargoyle with a unibrow and diaper. And it starts following them. I know it's not actually supposed to be a diaper, but it really looks like a diaper. They notice this after a while, and the gargoyles start screeching, and the kids run away. It chases them, and they go into an underground part of the building. Inside, it looks like an Egyptian tomb. They pretend they're statues, and then they hide in a triple-sized sarcophagus. The gargoyle finds them immediately, and they continue to have more chasing with lots of mummy puns. 
The group reconvenes, and Phyllis Diller continues telling them anecdotes about her dead husbands. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door. It's a magician! The great Misto. He's dark, tall, and handsome, with a European accent, carefully maintained mustache, top hat, and red silk lined cape. I know I said European accent. It's like really uh, vaguely European. I don't know where the guy's supposed to be from. He comes with a message from the spirit world. Phyllis Diller remarks flirtatiously that he's so handsome. When he sees her, his eyes practically pop out of his head and his tongue hangs out of his mouth comically. I hope she gets some action. That would make for an amazing episode. Unfortunately, we are led to believe that he's only aroused by the sight of the many jewels adorning Phyllis Diller. She says, what's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a million dollars in diamonds before? The great Misto pulls himself together, thinks about baseball, and says he's there with a message from the great Madame Zokar, who talks to spirits. She has been in touch with Phyllis Diller's first husband, Wilbur, and he wants her to come to the famous Magic Mansion. Phyllis Diller is excited to go and invites the gang along. Scooby and Shaggy are reluctant. Madame Zokar must be pretty powerful, by the way, if she uses magicians to be her messengers. They all caravan, and the mystery machine follows Phyllis Diller's blue Rolls-Royce convertible, driven by Lucas. Velma notes that the Magic Mansion has the initials M.M., like the bag. Yeah, Velma, but so does the mystery machine, so I'm not impressed. The Magic Mansion looks like a run-down Victorian house. Scooby and Shaggy don't want to go in, but there's a really big spider in the mystery machine, so they decide to just go with the other kids. Some dude runs past the kids to park the mystery machine for them. It looks like the great Misto, but he has an American accent now, so maybe it's just another one of Madame Zokar's entourage. Instead of driving away, there's a flash of red smoke and the van has disappeared. Velma is dismissive, shocker, and says, oh, that's just the old smoke trick. Sure, Velma. They enter the rundown house. Scooby and Shaggy are enticed in by delicious smells. But when the door closes, we see a skull laughing evilly. Is this the end of our intrepid heroes? How many magicians are in this ep? And whatever happened to that banana cream pie? We'll find out after this commercial break. In the future, roving bands of comic book podcasts will savage the wasteland, once known as the Internet. One podcast, the Grawlix Podcast, may not be the biggest, may not be the funniest, may not be the most well-spoken. Wait, what was my point again? Oh yes, the Grawlix Podcast. Listen to it at GrawlixPodcast.com. That's G-R-A-W-L-I-X Podcast.com. Okay, I'm not sure how to describe this. Inside the house, Phyllis Diller looks like she's talking to a concierge at a fancy hotel. He's a middle-aged European gentleman named Alberto. I suppose we're supposed to think he's Italian, but again, the accent is vague. He has a pencil mustache, a red bow tie, and a three-piece suit. He's carefully looking at a gigantic book. Phyllis Diller says she's there to speak with Madame Zokar. He consults the book and says Madame Zokar is in the dreary dungeon. This is like the creepy version of the Madonna Inn, I suppose. He then rings a desk bell and a floating translucent ghost comes over. He instructs them to follow. Velma's like, what's to be scared of? And Shaggy's like, um, that ghost right there? Fred defies all logic by saying, come on, you know there's not such thing as ghosts. This is reminding me a lot of the Scooby Natural episode, by the way. They all finally meet Madame Zokar. The concierge dude came along just for the thrill of it, I guess. Madame Zokar looks like a frumpy and nice lady in a queenly robe and pointed wizard hat. Imagine a plumper version of Mrs. Weasley, but in her dress robes. She's acting strangely, disoriented and unkempt. I kind of want to do the mini mental status exam on her. She acts as though she's unsure if she's in the correct place, and her hat keeps slipping. Perhaps someone used the confundo spell on her? Fred helps her to the table. Then she remembers she's supposed to talk to spirits. But suddenly she falls asleep and starts snoring softly. So not confundo, just drunk. The hotel dude wakes her up, and she starts the seance. But she calls the ghost of the wrong husband. Typical. 
and she sends that ghost back and another ghost comes over. It's a glowing, floating something. Wilbur chats for a while with Phyllis Diller. She's thrilled, but Velma says, there's something fishy going on. Wilbur says he's worried that Phyllis Diller's jewels may not be hidden in a safe place. Phyllis Diller assures him they're hidden where no one will ever find them. We now see the great Misto. Remember, he's the magician with the renegade tongue. I know it's complicated. He's listening around the corner. And Wilbur asks where she keeps them hidden. She says, in a wall safe behind your picture, Wilbur, and it can only be opened at midnight. The kids want to get Phyllis Stiller out of there and back home to re-hide the jewels, because they ain't no dum-dums. Velma explains that this was a plot to find out where she kept her jewels. But we see someone with a huge mustache and American accent say, no one gets out, lock everything. We only see his shadow, so we don't know if it's Lucas, the concierge, the great Mista, or some other dude. All the doors are now bolted, and the kids and Phyllis Stiller are captives in the Magic Mansion. Two eps in a row with kids getting trapped in mansions. They wander around aimlessly for a while, trying doors and windows. At least Phyllis Stiller is having fun. She's such a good sport. Fred comes up with a dumb plan. He tells Scooby and Shaggy to hide in a magician's box. You know, the kind that gets sawed in half. And the rest of them, including Phyllis Stiller, will put on some random moving men costumes that happen to be laying around. They will pretend they're just furniture movers that happen to be wandering around the house at 11 o'clock at night. You know, like movers do. They somehow squeeze Scooby and Shaggy into the box. Phyllis Stiller says, I haven't seen anything so funny since my last wedding. Fred and the rest are about to pick up the box when all of a sudden, a curtain opens. And we now realize that they've been on a stage in a packed auditorium. Misto the Magician comes out and bows to the audience. Fred, Vilma, Daphne, and Phyllis Stiller have escaped to the wings. But Scooby and Shaggy are now in a magic act. Misto announces he's going to saw someone in half. He asks for a volunteer from the audience. But Shaggy sticks his head out of the hole in the box and shouts, Wait a minute! Misto is a real pro and takes this in stride. He announces he already has a volunteer and starts sawing. Fortunately, this is just a trick, but there's some confusion when, after the box is sawed apart, a dog head appears out one side and a teenager's feet out the other. The audience laughs and then vice versa. They eventually hop off the stage to rejoin Phyllis Stiller and the rest of the gang. This would be a good time to seek help from the audience, but instead they go in a much more complicated route of still pretending to be movers. They get caught by henchmen, but Phyllis Diller manages to sweet-talk them and they get away to Phyllis Diller's mansion. Phyllis Diller arrives just a few minutes short of midnight. Unfortunately, the kids are in the mystery machine and they get separated from Phyllis Diller by a felled tree and a phony sign for a detour. Velma says it's a trap, but Fred and Daphne outvote her. Seemingly hours later, Fred insists they aren't lost, but everyone else realizes they've just been driving around in circles. They accidentally drive onto a raft, and then a secret henchman in the woods cuts the rope so that the mystery machine is eventually just floating down a river. They come across a drawbridge and have a really confusing argument with the caretaker there, and then they drive up a ramp that used to be part of the drawbridge and make their way back to Phyllis Diller's house. Okay, it wasn't hours, it's now 10 minutes to midnight. Time works in mysterious ways in cartoons. They ring the doorbell at Phyllis Diller's place, but no one comes to the door, so they break in. A lady next door, definitely a Gladys from Bewitched type of character, sees this and calls the police. I love this side plot, by the way. They end up locked in a dark room with Misto, who then disappears in a magic puff of smoke. They also have a chase scene with two large goons dressed in scary masks. Scooby and Shaggy hide in the trophy room as statues of a hunter and prey, but their sneezes give them away and the chase resumes. They climb a rope to get to the top of a bell tower. Not sure why there's one of these in the private residence, but whatever. And one of the goons pulls the rope to ring it and brings down the woofer and his boy. They end up falling on the goon and vanquishing him. They then slide down a laundry chute. Meanwhile, the other kids hide in some very large baskets. Scooby and Shaggy, when they get to the end of the laundry chute, land in the other baskets. 
They wrap sheets around themselves to look like ghosts and follow the goons to find Phyllis Diller. Out of one of the remaining baskets, we see the head of Madame Zokar pop up. Remember, she was the frumpy Mrs. Weasley wannabe. We're not really sure what she's up to, but definitely an accomplice at the least. Scooby looks really cute dressed as a ghost, by the way. Unfortunately, he and Shaggy make the mistake of looking at themselves in a mirror, and Scooby thinks they're real ghosts. They all take off their costumes and continue following the goons until they find Phyllis Stiller held captive in a grandfather clock. Good thing she's so skinny. The kids and Phyllis Stiller head out to the painting to catch the thief. Because remember, at midnight is the opportunity to steal the jewels. We see a hand reach out to move the painting aside and reach for the safe, but before the Scooby gang can pounce, two police officers show up and stop the crime. They reveal the two goons' identities. Alberto, remember the concierge dude, and some other random dude who we've never met. They never actually explain who this guy is, and we still don't know why Misto and Madame Zokar were running around the mansion. I still think they're guilty accomplices, but I don't know, somehow they escape prosecution. Also, I gotta admit that by this time in the episode, I had totally forgotten who Alberto was, and I had to go back through my notes. Velma is miffed that someone called the police, but they explain that it was the lady next door who actually appears to understand her civic responsibility. Good job, Gladys. Scooby then has a nice snack just in the nick of time before he faints from hunger. And that, I think, is the one of the most action-packed of the new Scooby-Doo movies that we've seen so far. Certainly, a 45-minute runtime is a long time for a Scooby ep, but this one was packed, and I loved it. Can't wait to hear what you all think. You can get in touch on Facebook and Twitter at Meddling Kids Pod, and of course, please join our Facebook discussion group. It's the Meddling Kids Podcast and Scooby-Doo Discussion Group, moderated by one of my besties, Tiff, who is just about the most awesome person you've ever met. And hey, she's stateside right now. Welcome back to the U.S., Tiff. Many thanks to Dave Sestay for the use of our theme music, Night Surfing. Thanks again for the patience Well, I was on sick leave during all this. Um, Sorry my nose is still kind of stuffed up. Sorry I'm still sounding kind of nasally while recovering. And just remember, next time you're trapping teens in a murder castle, you would have gotten away with it if it weren't for us meddling kids.